Hey, friend. Chris Van Viver here from WhyLogicProRules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. Over the last few weeks since the major OS update for Mac systems, Big Sur was released, I received a number of emails and comments like, hey, Chris, should I update to Big Sur on my Mac system? Now, assuming your Mac can update to Big Sur, there's a lot that goes into this. This is a pretty loaded question. So I'm going to offer you what I think. I'm also going to offer you some resources that you can bookmark so you can keep tabs on what's going on with your software and hardware in relation to the Big Sur update. And we'll also tackle the big question, should you go out and buy one of the new Mac systems running on the whole new Apple Silicon processors? This just seemed like a really important topic that deserved a video of its own. But you can apply what I say in this video to any future Mac OS update. So should you update your Mac to Big Sur? In a word, in a single word, no, absolutely not. I would avoid it at all costs, at least for the next couple months. Again, there's a whole lot that goes into this question and the answer. You know, there are exceptions to the rule, there are caveats. So we're just going to walk through it. But generally speaking, if you rely on your Mac day in and day out for number one, your profession, or number two, your creative body of work, I would hold off just until some of the compatibility issues and bugs just get ironed out. Of course, this is assuming that your Mac can update to Big Sur. Many folks Macs may not be able to. If you just click over here on how to upgrade, that'll bring you to this tab, which will tell you what Macs can run Big Sur. We're taking a look at the Apple page for Big Sur, and it's a major update. I mean, it looks like an iOS device. We've made a departure from Mac OS to something more holistic with iPhones and tablets and watches. The icons have been adapted. You've probably seen that if you've downloaded Logic Pro 10.6. We have a new control center. I mean, there's a lot going on under the hood, and we have to assume that this Mac OS update is perhaps even designed more so for the new Macs that came out. So over here on a tab, I have the new Mac Mini which shows off the new M1 processor. It tells us all the good things about it. Now, why shouldn't you update to Big Sur? Well, number one, if you use any third-party plugins or instruments or hardware, you've probably received a few emails. Maybe it went in your promotions tab or your junk folder, but they probably said, hey, we know Big Sur is coming out or it's out. We are not compatible with it yet, so don't update. So unless you're using only Logic Pro and the plugins and instruments that come with Logic Pro, that's the best reason. In fact, if we take a look at Isotope's website here, I just pulled up a couple of them. It says right here, we know that Big Sur is out. We know it's exciting to update your OS, but we're not compatible or ready for it yet. We suggest holding off. Some plugin companies may be going okay without a hitch. If we take a look at the FabFilter forum here, there is an update on November 11th that says we've tested our plugins with Mac OS 11 or Big Sur. We didn't find any problems. But again, we generally recommend to wait to upgrade at least until the first update of that Mac OS. So not just Mac OS 11, but maybe 11.1 or 0.2 or whatever. And this isn't just for plugins and instruments. If we take a look over here at Apogee's website, they have a whole page dedicated to Mac OS Big Sur and Apple Silicon compatibility. So I have the Apogee Ensemble. I mean, we can take a look here at some of the other interfaces they offer. Mac OS Big Sur compatible. Silicon core audio compatible. But if we look for the ensemble right there, we can see that it's compatible with Big Sur. Same thing for the Element series. Apple Silicon compatibility to be announced. And if we see below for these two devices here, went a little too far, ensemble and Element are having some problems with the audio device controls within Logic and some clock source issues and even some detection issues as well. So that to me says better hold off on Big Sur until this stuff gets fixed. Believe me, I'm chomping at the bit to update only because I want to see what Big Sur is all about. And these days, I only use a select array of third-party plugins. I really try to keep it all in logic if I can when I'm mixing or producing. But there is some third-party stuff that I rely on. And that means I'm going to be waiting a couple months to update as a result because I want to make sure those things work. Maybe you've already updated a Big Sur. Maybe you know someone who's already updated and they're saying, hey, I'm not experiencing any problems with my plugins, with my hardware. I would treat them as an anomaly, as an exception, and not like the green flag to just go ahead and update. Now, I also want to direct your attention to some resources online, which I'll link in the description below so you can just bookmark these. But there's a couple of sites that actually have a running list of what hardware, what plugins are compatible or are not compatible. Sweetwater is one that I can think of, has a great resource for making sure to back up your system and get ready for downloading the new update, but 
making sure that you can go back in time just in case it ends up not working with your particular system very well. And then there's a running list down here. We take a look by manufacturer name so we can just go down the list. We'll look for fab filter. So it'll be the first one here. Wait to upgrade, check back later. But we already took a look at that fab filter form so we know a little more beyond that. But if we take a look, we can look up Apogee. Limited compatibility, read more for all these different ones. This is a great resource. There's also a resource on Production Experts website or protoolsexpert.com, which again, I'll link in the description of this video, but it has a whole list just like Sweetwater of all the different brands and what they're saying about the updates. So we can look up Isotope right in the search field here, and we can see that it says we are currently testing Isotope products at this time, still working out the kinks, right? I do recommend that you double check with the manufacturer's website itself because I do find that sometimes these lists are not updated as quickly as one might hope. So if we look up Fab Filter here, it says everything that it says in this first post in the forum, but it doesn't say the update section. You see the update we have now tested and it seems like we haven't found any problems, but it doesn't say that here. So just keep that in mind that maybe you want to double check with the manufacturer or developer website. So if all you take away from this video is to not update to Big Sur, if you can help it at least for the first couple months until there's at least a couple of updates and any software or hardware that you rely on day in and day out has given you the go ahead in terms of compatibility, perfect. You don't have to watch any more of this video. But there's the other topic of should you buy one of the new Mac systems? And that's a totally different question. The question of updating to Big Sur is a different question than that of buying a new M1 processor Mac or Apple Silicon Mac. I mean, there are plenty of YouTube videos out there and articles you can read just gushing about how fast these new Macs are, how amazing they are in terms of speed, how much they can carry in terms of load. And really, these Macs are entry-level Macs. These are not quote-unquote professional Macs, something geared towards an audio professional or video professional or anybody else. And yet people are just blown away by how fast these things are going on this particular processor. Well, number one, you can assume that these new Macs are going to be running Big Sur. That's the operating system. It's going to show up on your doorstep running. So you don't even have the option of holding off with Catalina or Mojave or anything else. But the next question is, is, is your hardware compatible with M1 Mac? Like I pointed out with the ensemble here, if we go back and find it. Apple Silicon is not yet compatible for this device or the Element series or the Symphony series. And if we take a look at some of the other devices, they are compatible. And if we go find the new Symphony desktop, boom, it's compatible in all directions. That's great. But let's say you use Focusrite or Personas or anything else, you're going to want to double check with those manufacturers to see if their devices are compatible. Because if your hardware is not compatible with the newest line of Macs, that computer, while it's going to be really cool and really fast, it's essentially going to be a doorstop in your studio because you can't connect it to anything that you use. Plugins, everything we've discussed when it comes to the Big Sur update still applies because if those plugin companies are telling you to hold off on Big Sur, there's a likelihood that they're maybe not going to work on the new Macs as well. But everybody, again, is having different experiences. Some people are having no problems with their plugins. Some people are. Again, I have been eyeing this new Mac Mini. I'm dying to check it out. I'm very excited to get one. But until my interface is compatible with it, until my plugins are compatible with Big Sur, I really have no justification for it. And who knows? There are already rumors and leaks of a second Apple Silicon processor that may be launching in the new quarter of 2021, so quarter one. And they're calling it tentatively M1X. And who knows? This could be even better than what was just released. And maybe it's a processor that's going to be geared more towards the pro market. It all depends on where you are on that spectrum, but you may want to hold off on the new M1 purchase just in case you're looking for the next thing that could be right around the corner. I'll link all these articles and resources in the description below so you can bookmark them, you can check them out. But in a nutshell, should you update to Big Sur, I would say hold off until the plugins, the hardware that you're using has given you the go ahead, has said, that we are definitely compatible with the newest OS. So I hope that was helpful for you. If it was, as always, I highly recommend subscribing to the YouTube channel, YLogic Pro Rules, or subscribing on the website itself, ylogicprorules.com. Every week I'm posting new videos, new emails, and posts to help you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. Thanks so much.